And this problem, seven different positive integers will be placed in the seven boxes. The integers are placed so that the sums are all equal. So to the right, uh, up and down, and on both sides. So you guys understand. So the sum going up and down there is 31. The sum across is 31. And the sum going up and down there is 31. So that's what they're basically explaining. So the part A says we've got these four integers. Place them. OK. Shouldn't be a problem. They're already given us the sum is 29. So if the sum is 29, then I can e immediately figure out that that's got to be a 7 in order to make that sum 29. OK, so then we now have to sort of experiment. But it shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm pretty confident that the 15 will go there. Because the 15 will therefore be shared by this uh, column and that row. And that is important because 15 is a large number. And we need that large number to be shared by both in order for the sum to be 29. And then we only have two numbers left. And with a little bit of experimentation, we can easily figure out that the 3 goes there and the 5 goes in the middle. So that would be how you place those numbers. There's a value of t for which the figure shown has three equal sums and contains seven different integers. Well, let's see here. We have uh, this row, and we've got this column, and those sums have to be equal. So let's add them up. So t plus 1 plus 16 plus 10 is 2t minus 3 plus 10 plus 14, right? And this is simple algebra, and when you do it, you get t equal to 6. So 6 is the answer for t. 7 different, again, positive integers are placed in the figure so that 3 sums are equal if a is less than c. Determine all possible values of a. So a little bit, a little bit more work this time. So first, let's figure out what that sum is. And that sum is going to be 12 plus 9 plus 7. So 12 plus 9 plus 7 is 28. So the sum is 28. OK, so that, let's figure that out. I don't think we need to, but let's just do it for the sake of completion. b plus 7 plus 11 is 28. So that gives me that b is 10. Okay. I don't think I needed that, but now we concentrate on this. a plus 12 plus c. So where do you want to do that? Let's do it over here. So a plus 12 plus c is 28. OK, so that means a plus c is 16. So we'll make a little table, and off we go. So we have a and c. And let's make a little table and see what we get. And we've got to make a less than c. So let's start with our smallest positive integer, which is 1. And let's see what we get. When we plug that into there, we get c equal to 15. If a is 2, we get 14. If a is 3, we get 13. 4, we get 12. 5, we get 11, 6, 10. 7, 9, 8, 8. And at this point, I will stop. Why? Because remember, a has to be less than c. So this 8, 8 is disqualified because in that case, a is equal to c. And then for all the other ones, um, if we kept, kept going, a would be greater than c. So these guys, those are no good. Now let's see if these guys are good. At first glance, it seems like they are, but the key word here is different. That is something that needs to be uh, taken into serious consideration because it will allow us to see if all of these are valid. The 115, uh, that's fine. The 214, that's fine. The 313, that's fine. But the 412, that's a problem. Why? Because if we have C equal to 12, there's already a 12 in there. So that would mean the 12 would appear twice, and we can't have that because they all have to be different. So this one's no good. The 511, there's already an 11 in there, so for the same reason, that's no good. The 610, uh, is the 610 good or bad? Is there a 10 in there somewhere? Yeah, B was 10. Ah, so it was important for me to get the B. Okay, that's good. And the 79, well, it looks like we have both 7 and 9, so that's obviously useless. So... After we eliminate those, the only values of A that are valid are values of 1, 2, and 3.
The integers k and n are each between 4 and 18 inclusive. The figure contains 7 different integers and the three sums are equal. Determine all possible values of k. So same kind of story I think. Uh, not much difference here. So we have two variables this time and they're between 4 and k inclusive. And the sum uh, is, well they're all Hmm, interesting. They don't, they don't give us a sum, so I've got to figure this out. Well, one thing I notice is that if we look at that row in this column, they're all equal to 28 plus n, right? Yeah, 28 plus n. So those two, well, the sum and the column will be equal to each other regardless of what n is, right? Because n is here and n is there. It's here and it's here. So n could be anything. So let's just start with the table and let's see what happens let's just make a table okay so n where do I start here n is gonna be less than or equal to 18 and greater than or equal to 4 so let's just start with 18 and see what happens and the sum is there also so I've got to create a, a formula first so 7 plus 10 plus k has to be equal to uh, let's see here. Well, I guess I guess I guess I have to do it for every single one. Um, so if n is 18, and I look at that row, it'll be 10 plus n, which is 18 plus 18, correct? So that gives me a value. If I do this math really quickly, 29. So the 29 goes here. Okay, I got it. And then I got to do the same thing for 17 and so on. So if I do that, this will be 28. Same kind of thing that I did here. And then if I do 16, I'd get 27, and then so on down. And then if I go down to 7, it'll be 18. 6 will be 17. 5 will be 16. And 4, and four will be 15. And then, of course, I stop because now I've ended the range. N has to be greater than or equal to 4. Okay, so now we have to go back and see if these are valid. Because remember, they all have to be different. Uh, let's see here. Well, the first thing is that k is also got to be less than or equal to 18. So all of these values here are useless because k is greater than 18. The only time it's valid is in this range because k has to be in that range also between 4 and 18. Okay, so all of these guys are gone. Now let's see here. What's the 7 and 18, okay, that's no good because there's an 18 in there. So that would make it up that would be a problem because all the integers have to be different the 17 is that a problem no I think that's good for now we'll keep that one I think this is also good for now but the 4 is a problem because there's a 4 in here already so the only ones the, they want the well, values of k right so the only values of k are 16 and 17 according to the conditions in the question A line that is neither horizontal nor vertical intersects the y-axis when x equals 0 and intersects the x-axis when y equals 0. For example, the line with the equation 4x plus 5y is 40 intersects the y-axis at 0, 8 and the x-axis at 10, 0. The line with the equation 2x plus 3y equals 12 intersects the y-axis at A and the x-axis at B. If O is the origin, determine the area of A or B. 2x plus 3y is equal to 12. Let's graph this. And when we have x equal to 0, y looks like 4 to me. So that's 4. And when y is equal to 0, x is 6. So 6 is approximately here. So then uh, we draw that line. And this is O. So this is the triangle. Uh, that triangle right there, which they are calling A O B, because one of these is A, right? Uh, this is A, I guess, and then this is B. Okay, so that's a right angle. So the area is pretty straightforward. The area would be area of a triangle, which is one half base times height. The base is six, the height is four, and therefore that is twelve. Suppose that C is greater than zero. The line with the equation 6x plus 5y is c intersects the x-axis at d and the uh, 
intersects the y-axis at D and the x-axis at E. If O is the origin and the area of D, O, E is 240, determine the value of C. So same thing, I guess. Same kind of story. Let's draw that little graph. So we have um, y-axis, x-axis. And we have C is greater than 0. And 6x plus 5y is equal to C. So when x is 0, that means 5y is equal to C. And therefore y is equal to C over 5. So this will be this point that they're calling D will be C over 5. And then if uh, y is 0, then 6x is equal to C. So x is equal to C over 6. And therefore, that's going to be approximately there, wherever. And that's, uh, what are they calling that guy? E? Okay, E. So then that triangle is this guy. It's supposed to be a triangle. And therefore, the area would be 1 half base times height. And the base is C over 6. And the height is C over 5. And they told me the area is 240. So that's pretty straightforward. Now I just got to solve this equation. So C squared is equal to... 240, and then the denominator is what, uh, 60? Yeah, 60. So C squared would be 240 times 60. And then when you crunch out those numbers, you will get C equal to 120, I believe. Suppose that M and N are integers with 100 less than or equal to M, and M is less than N. The line with the equation 2mx plus y is equal to 4m intersects the y-axis at p and the x-axis at q. The line with the, with the equation 7nx plus 4y is equal to 28 intersects the y-axis at s and the x-axis at r if quadrilateral pqrs has an area of 2022 to determine two possible pairs mn. Let's draw the graph and let's see what happens. So we got x and y. Okay, so we have uh, two lines. The first is the PQ1. So this is P and this is Q. And that's for line 1, which is 2MX plus Y is equal to 4M. Right? Yeah. And uh, with, then we got a second line that I guess was L2, and that is uh, the 7N. Uh, x plus 4y is equal to 28n. And that is the uh, S and R line. So whatever, I have no idea what it looks like, but let's, let's say it looks like that. So this is the S and this is the R. And then they're saying, uh, what are they saying here? Uh, quadrilateral PQRS is 2022, okay? So that means basically the 2022 is equal to this shaded region basically. So in order to get that it would be the you'd be subtracting the big triangle from the little triangle. So you'd subtract a uh, triangle, you take the big one which would be SOR and subtract from it a uh, triangle POQ. Yeah. Okay, so that means uh, SOR would be 1 half base times height. And I'll just use the letters to uh, for now, uh, so the base would be R and the height would be S, and then subtract from that one half base times height for POQ, and the base would be Q and the height would be P. Okay, and then I guess somehow we have to then figure out M and N. Okay, so that shouldn't be a problem. So let's do this now. So let's do this math now. Uh, for L1, when X is 0, uh, y will be 7n, and when y is 0, x will be equal to 4. And I, simple math, so I'll let you guys do that. I don't think I need to walk you through it. So, and then we'll fill in these guys. So what I just figured out was for L1. So I basically figured out, I believe, p and q. So p is my 7n, right? This guy. And the Q is the 4. So this is 4 and this is 7N. So therefore, if I put it into the f formula... Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just see if I did this right. Uh, uh, 
uh, sorry, that that's for L two, L two. So uh, that's for uh, S and R. So the R is the four, and the S is the seven, and this guy right here. Okay, no problem. So I can fill that in. So S and R, so that's four goes here, and the seven N is the S. Okay, that's good. So now let's do for L1. L1, when x is 0, so this is L1 right here, y will be 4m. And then when y is 0, x will be 2. So therefore, this q is 2, and this p is 4m. Okay, so then if I plug those in, the 4m goes, the q is 2, so that goes there, and the p is 4m, so the 4m goes there. Okay, so now we've got what we need. So 2, 0, 2, 2, uh, this is what, 14n, and this is 4m. Okay, so basically what we need to do now is figure out integer solutions to that equation. And are there any parameters? Uh, yes, there are, these guys right here. So, okay, I got it. So, m is greater than or equal to 100 and less than n. Okay, so that definitely helps me. So, let's just start with 100 and plug it into that equation. And when you do, you get 173. So, right off the bat, we got one pair. And then if we do 101, we'll get 173.2. That's not an integer because they need to be integers, right? Yeah, they're, all, they're both integers. Okay. And then just keep going like that, and eventually you'll get to 107, which will give you an integer solution for n. And they only want two. Uh, they just said determine two possible pairs. I, I, I'm, I'm confident that there's more, but they only want two. So you can just include those two, and, and that would be sufficient. A straight path is 2 kilometers in length. Beatrice walks from the beginning of the path to the end of the path at a constant speed of 5 kilometers per hour. Hugh cycles from the beginning of the path to the end of the path at the constant speed of 15 kilometers per hour. Suppose that Hugh starts 10 minutes later than Beatrice. Determine the number of minutes that it takes for Hugh to catch up to Beatrice on the path. Well, uh, let's see here. The first 10 minutes, we have... I believe Beatrice just all by herself, right? Because Hugh starts 10 minutes later. So we're using that formula, speed is equal to distance over time. So speed times time is distance or any variation. So for Beatrice, her first 10 minutes, she's going to be, speed is for her 5, right? And then the time, well, we have to convert this 10 minutes to hours because the speed is in kilometers per hour. So 10 minutes is 1 over 6. So 5 over 6 is her distance. That's how much she travels in those first 10 minutes. And then they're going to meet. Uh, the, yeah, the, when he catches up is when they meet. Is when the distances are the same, right? Yeah, I believe so. So we have distance for Beatrice. has got to be equal to the distance for Hugh. Now, the distance for Beatrice, she initially... Uh, gets a head start, so she has that 5 over 6. But then her remaining distance would be just the speed times the time. Her speed times her time. And then for Hugh, it's just speed times the time for him. So let's do this. 5 over 6. Beatrice's speed is 5. And the time, well, the time is what we're trying to figure out in this question. And then his speed... Uh, Is 15, 15 t. Yeah. Okay, so I guess that's the algebra there. So therefore, 5 over 6 is 10 over 10 t, and therefore t is equal to 5 over 60, and that's in hours, and that pretty much is the equivalent of five minutes. So, five minutes is the answer to that question. Suppose that Beatrice starts at a time that is exactly B minutes after 9 a.m. and Hugh starts at a time that is exactly H minutes after 9 a.m. where B and H are integers from 0 to 59 inclusive that are each randomly and independently chosen. Determine the probability 
that there is a time at which Beatrice and Hugh are at the same place on the path. Our parameter for B and H are between 0 and 59. So B and H. Now, probability of anything is usually a fraction, and the bottom number is the total, and the top number is our specific condition. Now, the specific condition, that's the one that we have to really concentrate on. I don't know what that is. I'm just going to call it n. The total, of course, b has, from 0 to 59 inclusive, 60 values. And h also has 60 values but in terms of the total possible values. So if you have 60 values for b and 60 values for h, the total number of pairs will be 3,600. So... Uh, what are we asking for here? Yeah, we have to get pairs and figure out which one of those pairs leads to a situation where they are on the same place. So that w that 3600 is what goes in the denominator there. Okay, so that's basically how we're going to approach this, but then we have to do a lot of work to get that N. Okay, so how do we get that N here? Okay, so again, speed is equal to distance over time, or time is equal to distance over speed, right? So for this guy, it'll be 2 over 5, because the, the distance is 2, if you recall, and, and the speed is 5. So that's 24 minutes, in terms of minutes, because you've got to convert that to minutes. For H, uh, this was Beatrice, for Hugh, that's 2 over 15, and that's 8 minutes. So we basically have a situation that for those two to meet, for them to meet, we need uh, the H and the B to be positive. H minus B has to be positive. And then H minus B has to be less than 16. If you compare the 24 and the 8, there's a difference of 18. So therefore, their difference has to be a maximum uh, 18. It could be less than that, but it can't be more than that because then they would not meet. Okay, and then basically all we're doing now is uh, with these parameters, we're just going to try to figure out values. So this and this is used to figure out the values of H and B, and that's it really. So let's start. If B is 0, then H would be 0, 1, dot, 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 all the way until 16, and that's 17 values. So 17 values. If B is 1, then H would be 1 all the way to 17. Again, that's another 17 values. If B is all the way until 43, we kind of get the same scenario. that You're always going to get uh, 17 values. But then things change a little bit. Uh, let me put those parameters here in the same screen here. B comma H is less than 59. All right, so then things change a little bit. Then if B is 44, then H is going to be 44 all the way till 59. But that's not 17 anymore. That's only 16 because we top out at 59. If B is 45, then H will be 45 all the way till 59, and that's 15. If B is 46... You're kind of seeing a pattern here. This is 46 all the way to 59, and that's 14. And then so on down. When B is 58, all the way up to 58, we get 58 and 59. That's only two values. And then finally, when B is 59, H will be 59, and that's only one value. So these values is what we have to figure out. What we have to add up is what I should be saying. And that total is N. So for these guys... All of them were 17. How many were there? From 0 to 43 is 44 of those guys. So 44 times 17, that's the total there. And then the 16, 15, well, that's just 16 plus 15 plus 14 plus all the way down to 3, 2, and 1. And this is relatively straightforward math, and you can do that. And that's 84. So our probability, which is this, is... 
884 over 3600 and in lowest terms that would be 221 over 900